Hey, what's up guys? Tony here and welcome to another game of MLB 12 Road to the Show with Charles Ward. This is the AA Playoffs. This is the last series that Charles is going to be playing in the minor leagues. As I told you guys in one of the previous commentaries, he goes and he makes his way, his way to the majors. Invited to training camp in the spring and makes the club. And so where I'm at right now, I believe, and I haven't really played much with this character as of late. Um, I believe he's in August of 2013, so it's almost the end of the season. I um, there's a reason why I'm waiting to do that this the next video or something. I can't remember what it is, but anyways, this is game two of the playoffs. Game one, I pinch hit, and I think I had like a two pitch ground out to second base. So instead of showing you guys that, you know, ground out to second base, I was like, you know what I'm do? I'm just gonna tell them why because. It's not really all that important, but um, yeah, anyway, so this is game two of the playoffs, and uh, let's take a look at it. What I'm going to do, actually, I was going to do like this crazy combination of like points, because after every game I put points into the character, uh, but I didn't want to confuse, so I'm going to do the whole series, and I'm going to get to the, the points at the end like I normally do. So there's like three separate sections of points, because I, I had a bunch of points. I had like four or five hundred points total that I've distributed throughout this video. So, anyways, um, but what I want to get to is, a, is something I actually wanted to get to earlier in the week. I just totally brain farted or just didn't have time or what have you. Um, but most of you guys probably have already heard of uh, Ozzy Gian. Well, you've, you should hopefully you should have heard of Ozzy Gian. He's a very controversial manager. But his comments this last, uh, last weekend were especially controversial usually he rattles on and and uh has tirades about sports writers or apparently uh you know homosexuals and all sorts of other things that he talks about and that he has very strong feelings about and it's gotten him into trouble before but these latest comments now that he's the manager of the miami marlins uh have gotten him into even deeper and potentially could end this tenure i don't know i don't know what's going to happen but it could end this tenure in miami and just in case you don't know i'm going to go just tell you guys right now basically what he said in a, in the to a times magazine reporter is that he admires fidel castro the former dictator of cuba for remaining in power he, he apparently he said he quote loves him and admires him now, I don't have the actual quote in front of me because, I mean, I could quickly just look it up on um, Time's website to see what it says. The problem, the only problem with that is that he's known for having really bad English, you know, his syntax, because uh, he speaks Spanish. He's a native Spanish speaker. I think he's from Venezuela. And uh, so his syntax is all messed up sometimes. He's Sometimes you hear him speak in English and it's just like, what? <laughs> Well, okay, English is not your first language, which is not a problem. Uh, but maybe what he meant to say, like he, when he had his apology this week, he basically said that you know he it was a mistake and that uh, it was one of those things that he'll try to hopefully get the people of Miami to forgive him. Uh, but uh, his point was is that he didn't mean to say what he meant to, what he said, which is strange because people typically, unless you're in the middle of a fight. You know, sometimes you're just like in the middle of a fight with someone and you're just like, you are fat. <laughs> if you're like in a fight with your girlfriend or whatever. And, you know, you, you say those things that cut really deep because you yourself are being cut deep. So it's one of those, I don't know, retaliation tactics or whatever. But in this case, if you're talking to a reporter, you, you kind of like speak your mind. And I'm not going to vilify him and I'm not going to damn him for what he said. Because personally, you know, this is the United States. And I firmly believe that, hey, we have the right. Of freedom of speech now of course that comes with a whole bunch of counter arguments you know like the whole you can't yell fire in a crowded theater because people trampled and people die so there's always gonna be consequences for your actions but what I have noticed is this there's this trend going on in sports where somebody says something and then they've got to come on TV and apologize for it or something happens like the pain manning thing the pain manning thing is a good example it's like an insignificant thing such as pain manning being released by the colts because when you look at it in its context of significant things that's newsworthy it's not really all that significant yeah the colts let him go and they signed with the broncos and they had a big old thing about that and then they had a big old thing about tim tebow in in new jersey or new york the jets organization um it's weird but it's especially weird when 
things that the tenets that we take for this country were like this is a very important part of our country the freedom of speech and so someone opens their trap and they say something and the next thing you know they're on tv you know saying oh, i'm sorry i didn't mean what i said but you said it you probably meant it you know so basically the what i'm getting at is this whole idea that this country for some reason people are just getting aggravated and insulted by the littlest things and i don't know it's it just it's starting to rub me the wrong way you know it's like if Yes, there are consequences to everything that you do. And if you say something, maybe there's some internal consequences like the Marlins will suspend them for five games or whatever. But then it makes national news. I mean, I can understand why it made national news because in Miami, like the stadium is built around all these Cuban Americans who who left Cuba, fled Cuba to come to the United States because of Castro was killing people and, you know, being a very bad person. Um, but... The, the idea that um, that there's this I mean I, I understand the public outroar and I understand that 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 there should be something done but at the same time you know it conflicts with my my belief in the freedom of speech and like I said that the freedom is is limited you know it's not absolute you can't just go around saying everything up we've got laws against slander and all sorts of other stuff so I get that but it's just like every time every time it has to have some sort of um, some sort of a, a public spectacle out of it you know and, and there, there are groups in Miami who are going to protest the Marlins or protest at Marlin Stadium until Ozzie Gann is fired that's how strong they feel about that and I understand that I mean I can see that's why that's a consequence right there of, of his actions is that the fan base that they, they're trying to bring together they suddenly polarized and people now don't want to come to Marlins games because they've got a manager who admires Fidel Castro a person that the fan base they're trying to reach out to absolutely despises and hates and some people on the radio have been making this sort of analogous to someone some white person being like i admire hitler you know there are people out there you know there are these neo-nazi you know white supremacist people who who you know are like that of course they're not really in a position to be uh, role models i don't know if you can consider a baseball manager a role model but just someone who's in the, the public light um but those people are out there, but, you know, there's not much said about them. You're like, oh, they're just sort of a fringe group, whatever. I think, I think a lot of it has to kind of do with the fact that baseball is America's game, America's pastime, and so there's something pure about it that they that we all want to maintain with baseball. I don't know. If, but um, and, and another example uh, that I wrote down on my notes is, is the um, Tiger Woods thing, you know. It's something that was, that was very personal – and, and um, private turned into a public spectacle. Uh, I think a lot of it had to do with the ladies just totally getting out there, and it was very much, you know, the snowball effect. And But then Tiger Woods had to go on TV and would be like, I'm sorry for being addicted to sex and uh, liking, to se- liking to sex up the girls. You know, it's like, well, does he have really have to apologize for that? I mean... I don't think so. I mean, I know like I know some of his sponsors dropped him, but it's like that's that's their right to do that, you know. But the idea that he had to come on TV and apologize for liking sex and having an affair. It's like pe- people have affairs all the time, you know. And the whole and then this is what I know someone's going to be like, "Well, you know, he's a role model and so, you know, he has an obligation to live this moral high life and you know, that's great. I, I do believe that, yeah, there are people who are role models. But the, the, those kids who were looking up to people like Tiger Woods, you know, they might think that's super cool to go have sex with, like, 15, 20 girls or whatever while you're married. The flip side is, is those people have parents. Those kids have parents, and the parents should teach them. That's wrong. I shouldn't have to have Tiger Woods come on TV and tell me that, oh, God, I'm sorry for what I did because it was wrong. You know, I know that's wrong, you know, because in our culture, we only marry one person. You know, it's a monogamous culture that we live in. We, we don't live in, uh, like, you. <laughs> I don't say Utah. I'm about to offend somebody. Uh, I'm sorry for offending you, by the way, uh, Utah, because I am about to call you guys polygamists. <laughs> but, um, but that whole got to make a public spectacle thing out of it is is. I'm kind of over it, to be honest. That, that I think that's pretty much the main, I don't know, the main feeling that I have with this whole thing. It's just like I'm over the public spectacle. I don't need a press conference 
every time somebody does something. And the other thing that I'm really over is when the government gets involved, like the steroid scandal. Put that in my notes right here. The steroid scandal when there were these uh, the congressional hearings and they're just trying to clean up baseball. It was just it made it kind of a it made a really big public spectacle. And it's like, hey, look, baseball can take care of that themselves. They don't need the U.S. government getting involved with the steroids thing. That's their business. Um, and then now they're, you know, they're. We all know that they're trying to, um, I don't know, indict or pros I think they're probably trying to prosecute Barry Bonds for perjury. It's like, come on, man, the guy is a, a baseball player. You know, yes, did he lie under oath? We don't know. We can't really definitive, definitively say that for sure. But the thing is, he's not a criminal. I mean, he lied on an oath. Yes, that is a crime. But in the grand scheme of things, it's like, okay, what should we really spend this much money to prosecute a guy who wanted to save his ass under oath? It's kind of like the Bill Clinton thing. He's kind of like, I didn't have sexual relations with that lady, but you did. But you define sex as something that is like intercourse and not oral sex. So um, we're going to split hairs here. Yeah. So anyways. That's just that's what's been going on. I'm kind of curious. What do you guys think about the Ozzy Gian thing? Do you think uh, do you think he should get fired? You know, um, or do you think the five game suspension is enough? And um, what do you guys think about this whole public spectacle thing? Every time someone who is remotely in the spotlight does something bad, they gotta suddenly have a press conference about it. So let me know that in the comment section. All right. So we got like I said, I got 500 points here. What I'm gonna end up doing is actually put a lot of points in the speed because I'm trying to get my character. To be a speed demon but I uh, put 50 points into speed I put 50 points into fielding and then uh, to can you continue on that sort of fielding range I'm gonna put 50 points into reaction time and then 50 points into acceleration and then I put 150 points into right hand contact and then 151 points into right hand power so like I told you before my goal once I get to like a 50 or 60 I try to get up to the next 10 so I'm trying to get up to 70 and then um, the next batch, when I had 49 points after that first couple of games, so I put it right into speed, so 49 points into speed. And then the last one, I put 49 points again into speed, so I put almost 200 points into speed. So anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'm looking forward to seeing your comments in the comment section, and, uh, and I'll talk to you guys later.